You know them, you love them, and you couldn't imagine things without them. But you should try. I don't know, I can imagine quite a bit. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 alternate casting choices in film. But we're a little rushed, so if you'll just get on board, we'll get out of here. For this list, we're taking a look at actors who were at one point considered for iconic movie roles that later went to other people. In most of these cases, had the original actors been cast, it would have made for a very different movie. Yeah, baby. Number 10, Burt Reynolds as James Bond on Her Majesty's Secret Service. I admire your luck, Mr. Bond. James Bond. When Sean Connery walked away from the James Bond series after five films, producers scrambled to find someone to fill his big, bespoke shoes. Burt Reynolds was approached, but turned the role down by saying an American couldn't play the quintessentially British secret agent. For the good old American life. For the money, for the glory, and for the fun. Mostly for the money. Producers hired unknown Australian George Lazenby instead. My name's Bond, James Bond. When the Aussie quit after one film, another yank was tapped. West. Adam West. Of course. How clever. But Batman declined the part for the same reason as Reynolds, allowing Connery to resume the role. You just killed James Bond. Is that who it was? Well, it just proves no one's indestructible. Number nine. Sylvester Stallone as Axel Foley, Beverly Hills Cop. Initially, plastic surgery aficionado Mickey Rourke was attached to star in this action comedy. Get out of here! But when his holding contract expired, producers asked Rocky himself. Sly thought it would be a pretty good film, except for all that damned comedy. I ain't doing fine, look like an idiot. So he rewrote the script as an action flick, but this caused budget problems since comedy, unlike action, is cheap. Stallone was then allowed to leave and take his reworked script with him, allowing Eddie Murphy to step in. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Oh, and Stallone's script? It's called Cobra. No hard feelings, pal. Number eight, Sean Connery as Gandalf the Grey, the Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring. Regale me. Armed with both a beard and a happening accent, Connery has everything it takes to be a killer Gandalf. In the end, there can be only one. However, the former Bond turned down the role for a very simple reason. He didn't understand the script. Oh, we can't all be geniuses, can we? Although that move made him the only person brave enough to admit not getting the whole Hobbit thing, it was a pricey decision, as the films were hugely successful and led to another trilogy. But the question is, do I need the Empire? We can't be sure if Ian McKellen gets the story, but he sure seems okay with it. You shall not pass! Number seven, John Travolta as Forrest Gump, Forrest Gump. Now wait a minute, just wait one minute. Travolta passed on this iconic rom-com drama despite being a top pick for the part, and despite having been in a string of duds. Well, he's got a plethora of opportunities, regular genius. Sure, Pulp Fiction restored his career that same year, but it's just one of the many classic roles the actor didn't accept. Other Travolta passovers include American Gigolo, Chicago, and Apollo 13. As for Gump, Chevy Chase and Bill Murray also turned it down before Tom Hanks took the role. Weirder still is Gump author Winston Groom's pick, John Goodman. I get the feeling that this here ain't exactly working out. Number six, Will Smith as Neo, The Matrix. Whoa. This flick's about to get real, real jiggy. Yes, before Keanu Reeves wooed his way into the Matrix, the Fresh Prince himself was offered the lead in this mindbender. Walk this way. <laughs> no. <laughs> Smith has no regrets about passing on Neo, citing Reeves' bullet time awesomeness in the film. You gotta stick to what we each do best. While there are rumors that Ewan McGregor also turned down the iconic role, he denies this, speculating if there were truth to the rumor, it'd be his agent's fault. His agent, Faley McBalldropper, was not available for comment. How did this happen? We're smarter than this. Apparently not. Number five, Christopher Walken as Han Solo, Star Wars Episode IV, A New Hope. I am you, and you are me, and we are here. Walken was a leading contender for this iconic role, as were Nick Nolte and Al Pacino. That's a true story. 
also considered at various points were Burt Reynolds, Richard Dreyfuss, James Caan, Sylvester Stallone, Kurt Russell, James Woods, Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, Steve Martin, and anyone who wasn't Harrison Ford. Don't say anything and we'll get along just fine. George Lucas had previously used and liked Ford in American Graffiti, but wanted new faces for his space opera. Although Lucas denied Ford an audition, he did hire him to read Solo's part during audition sessions before giving in and just casting him. On Solo, I'm Captain of the Millennium Falcon. Number four, Nicolas Cage as Superman, Superman Lives. We're sitting on top of the story of the century here. There was a lot of buzz around this Kevin Smith pen script in 1996. Buzz. Things started off well with beefy pay-or-play contracts issued for both director Tim Burton and Nick Cage as the would-be Clark Kent. Good move. Ass. Kick. Let's keep it that way. Kevin Spacey, meanwhile, was tapped to play Lex Luthor, and Tim Allen and Jim Carrey were each in the running for Brainiac. Maybe! A 1998 release date was set to tie in with Soup's 60th anniversary. But by April of that year, production was halted after $30 million was spent on the non-film. Don't it just break your heart? Number three, Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly, Back to the Future. This has gotta be a dream. Unlike most alternate casting choices on our list, Stoltz actually spent several weeks filming Back to the Future. However, a month into production, director Robert Zemeckis and Stoltz himself decided the actor wasn't quite right for the part, and producers finally secured their first pick, Michael J. Fox. Fox then had to balance night shooting of the film with daytime shooting of a sitcom, Family Ties. I slept a total of a minute and a half in the last six nights. However, a tiny smidgen of Stoltz's McFly does remain in the film. He drives the DeLorean away from the Libyans. Yeah, we can't tell it's him either. Number two, O.J. Simpson as the Terminator, the Terminator. I'll be back. Along with eventual futuristic cyborg Arnold Schwarzenegger, O.J. Simpson was a studio top pick for the title role in The Terminator. All I know is never bet on the white guy. Simpson's sweet dreams of robot stardom were dashed by director James Cameron, who felt the former running back was just too darn nice to play a cold-blooded killer. Juice was then best known for his football days and the occasional TV commercial. That's why I switched to the Schick Fleximatic some time ago. It would be many years before the shocking event that made him a household name, his supporting role in the Naked Gun series. Doc says I should be on my bean and as good as new in a week. And back on the force. Thornburg, that's wonderful. Whoa! Before we cast our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Jack, I... Oh, no, let me try and get this out. I love those redheads, man. I know you. <laughs> I shall take you to the Black Pearl. As holy mio, oh, sada mia. It was almost as though I knew what was going to be around every corner. Maybe they really are deviled eggs. They're possessed. Let's face it, this is not the worst thing you've caught me doing. Number one, Tom Selleck is Indiana Jones, Raiders of the Lost Ark. <laughs> da, 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 what? As with Star Wars, George Lucas was hesitant to reuse Harrison Ford and opted for the somewhat fresher face of Tom Selleck. That's crazy. Although Selleck was interested and even screen tested for the role, he couldn't accept it due to his commitment to the then unaired Magnum P.I. Private investigator. Lucas buckled again and cast Ford just three weeks before production began. Trust me. Ironically, Selleck could have accepted both parts had he known Magnum would be delayed for over six months because of a writer's strike. One thought ran over and over through my head. If I'd been on time. Do you agree with our list? What stars would you have preferred to see in your favorite roles? For more brain-melting top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Thank you for all your cooperation.